Welcome back to Proxam, everybody. Uh, and today we're going to be doing a video on Guardian Defenders. And this is a unit that, um, well, is probably kind of in the middle tiers of Eldar Troop Choices, but it's not considered a very good unit for a lot of reasons. And I have my own problems with Guardian Defenders. I've had problems with Guardian Defenders for, well, to be honest with you guys, um, basically four editions. Uh, really, ever since 5th edition, I've had issues with the um, Guardian Defenders in the Eldar roster because I don't think they fit well with um, the rest of our units. Um, and honestly, a lot of the times, they seem to be out of place. I don't know what it is exactly, um, but I think just, you know, obviously, thematically, they fit in great. They look fantastic, um, you know, if you care about that. But rules-wise, they've always just been kind of lackluster and outcompeted by other units almost every single edition. So, um, but what we're going to do is I don't want to make a video just, you know, kind of telling you guys about all the problems Guardians have, right? I want to actually dive into Guardians. I think that there is a way to bring this unit into focus and to understand maybe a few effective ways in which we can use Guardians um, if you guys like to use them. Because honestly, they are... Not an incredibly terrible unit, right? So Guardian Defenders are what we're going to be concentrating on today. We're not going to be looking at Storm Guardians. That's probably going to be a video down the road when I finally figure out how to use them effectively. Because as of now, uh, I haven't found a good way to use them. But for Guardian Defenders, I think they're very viable in certain cases. And um, we're going to go ahead and talk about what those cases are um, in this video and kind of do a deep dive into Guardian Defenders. So a quick overview, um, we're going to look at the stats, weapons, and special rules of Guardian Defenders. We're going to be looking at the weaknesses of Guardian Defenders as well as their strengths, because they have both. Um, and we're going to be kind of talking about the most effective ways uh, to play them and run them. Because, you know, a lot of players out there like Guardian Defenders, and, you know, we want to find a way to make them work, right? We don't want them to just be that useless fluff unit that we just include because we like them. We actually want to make them work and be good so that, um, you know, we can continue to have fun with them because they do have great models, whether you're looking at the new models or the older versions. Um, and they're honestly not that bad. Um, so let's look, take a look at the stats. So they have pretty average stats for Eldar. The problem with them though, I think is that they have a lower leadership value and they are, um, basically required to take a unit of 10 minimum so you can't have less than that so you can't ma min max them for you know to just fill out your troop choices they're nine points a model so a unit of 10 will bring you to 90 points without the platforms the platforms are 20 points a model and that's without accounting for weaponry um i think scatter lasers and shuriken cannons are free they're just the 20 points honestly not many players um really get this the first read when they're kind of reading um, the you know stat line of the heavy weapon platform. But the stats of the heavy weapon are actually, believe it or not, completely and utterly worthless. Um, it does have stats, but they're not really worth anything because the platform itself doesn't count um, as an actual unit model. So I'll go into that in uh, just a second. But basically, what that means is, is that... Um, even though it seems like a tougher um, version of a Guardian, it's like, oh, okay, this is harder to kill. So it's harder to kill my heavy weapons in the unit. The truth is, is that you're never going to actually use the stat profile uh, because of the special rule crude platform, which I'll get into. But basically, um, 20 points for a heavy weapon that doesn't get to use its upgraded stats um, is extremely disappointing. And I'll go into why in just a second. But basically, it's kind of like a um, situation where you're paying double the points for a heavy weapon um, and you're not getting much of a benefit from it. So um, and when I say that, I'm talking about the crude platform um, ability, which is uh, something we're going to talk about later in this video. But, you know, 20 points for something like this, it's kind of a bummer. I think if anything, GW needs to look at um, the points cost of the heavy platform and 
adjust it accordingly. But let's look at the basic weapon of this unit, which is the Shuriken Catapult. So the Shuriken Catapult got a significant upgrade by upgrading its range and um, upgrading its AP to negative one instead of zero. Against Space Marine targets, this will be neg negligible because of Armor of Contempt, but it improves their firepower against a lot of other types of enemies. Um, and it has the Shuriken Special Rule, which means if you roll a six to wound, you get an additional minus two AP. So this does pretty good damage against infantry and can even threaten bigger targets with enough shots. Now, the cool thing about Guardians is that Guardians can be taken in large units. That means that with the right buffs, they can actually be a very powerful force. Um, they do have a lot of weaknesses, but the Shuriken Catapult is actually a good weapon. It has a decent range, more range than it did before, and it has slightly better AP against most enemies. Now, they do also come with plasma grenades, but to be honest with you, grenades in this edition aren't really the best. Um, you probably shouldn't try to be within six inches of enemy units if you can help it. And the grenade is actually arguably worse against a lot of targets than the Shuriken Catapult. Um, it's only really good against extremely light targets or if the enemy is very close and maybe has 10 or more models in the unit. Or has six or more models, realistically. Now, as for the weapons that they can take on the heavy weapon platform, they have two anti-tank weapon options, basically the Eldar Missile Launcher and the Bright Lance. They're kind of expensive. They bring the cost of the platform up to 25 points for the Missile Launcher and 30 points for the Bright Lance, respectively. And they can help against bigger targets, but if they're firing on the move, they will be hitting on a 4+, plus because they are heavy weapons and unfortunately um the platforms do not count as vehicles they are not immune to the move and shoot penalty that heavy weapons accrue yes that is correct eldar heavy weapons in a guardian squad will still unfortunately um suffer the minus one penalty to hit when moving and firing which is extremely disappointing because you think on a platform that that wouldn't be the case um but unfortunately that's what it is now, the Scatter Laser and Shuriken Cannon option are free, but they're still going to be hitting on a 4 plus on the move because they are heavy weapons. And these are good weapons, and they're, they're better than the alternative, which is the um, heavy weapons, uh, excuse me, the anti-tank weapons, Bright Lance and Eldar Missile Launcher, which I think are probably a little bit less effective on Guardians, to be honest. I think the Eldar Missile Launcher is probably the better choice, to be honest with you guys, than the Bright Lance. But um, having played these guys several times now, um, I actually would prefer these um, a lot more. The Shuriken Cannon benefits from the Guardian Defender uh, special ability, uh, the Defender's ability, which I'll talk about in a second, and the Scatter Laser is a very long range and has a lot of shots, um, so it can provide pretty decent supporting fire uh, from a distance. And like I said, they're free, it keeps the Guardians a little bit cheaper and more focused towards anti-infantry. As for the Star Cannon, the Star Cannon just seems to kind of be the ugly duckling in this uh, codex. Um, I wasn't really sure about the reasoning that GW had behind uh, giving it an extra strength. Uh, but that's all they really did to it, and they basically kept it the same other than that. So, not a very effective weapon, in my opinion. I think, honestly, it should probably, you know, it would probably do good with a couple of changes, but I'm not really an effective weapon on Guardians for its point cost. So when we look at the crude platform ability, this is the ability that the um, platforms have. And when I saw this, I was very excited because I was like, oh, okay, these guys are going to be able to move and fire with no penalties um, and maybe even advance and fire just like the rest of the unit can, right? Um, but unfortunately, they don't have this. So basically what this does is it just says that um, the platforms do not count as models for the purposes of leadership and starting unit strength or whether or not the unit is at half strength so essentially just um you know for the sake of different special rules that may uh, have bonuses against half strength units or units at full strength they don't count um they also don't count for leadership purposes um so you know if you lose one it doesn't necessarily count against you so to speak um when you're taking leadership checks but the problem with this is it doesn't really have any positive effects um either 
Um, it can't move and shoot without penalty, um, which is the one thing I really look forward to seeing, but it can't do that. Um, and other than that, it has no other positive effects. It doesn't give the unit any extra survivability or anything like that. Um, it just really just doesn't do a lot. It just kind of sits there and, um, yeah, that's it. Um, doesn't really add much of anything, uh, to the unit except for its heavy weapon. Now the defender's ability, I actually think is quite good. Um, and the reason why is because I think this makes the unit a little bit more independent in that you don't necessarily need to, you know, cast guide on it or anything like that for it to be effective because while it's within range of an objective, um, it will be getting rerolls of one to hit with all of the shuriken weapons. And that includes shuriken cannons if you choose to use the platforms, um, which can help negate some of the to hit penalties that you'll incur um, if you choose to move and fire with these guys. So this is a pretty good ability, gives the unit a little extra kick um, when you're controlling an objective. And the good thing about this, it does not require the unit um, to basically... Uh, all be in range of the objective. So if we read the rule, it says, while this unit is within range of an objective marker. So actually this doesn't even need, you don't need to have um, exact control of the objective. You just need to be in range of it. So let's say that there's an enemy unit near it too. Well, that's okay. You'll still get your ability um, to reroll once a hit. Let's say that you only have one or two guardians within range of the objective. Well, guess what? Um, you're still counted as in range of that objective marker, um, at least two models of it. So the whole unit is still going to get the benefit of it. Um, so that means you can reroll hit rolls of one when firing all of your shirking weapons. So pretty good ability in general. And I'm actually happy with that special ability. I think it kind of plays into their strengths a little more. Um, as for their keywords, they have the guardian keyword, um, so they can benefit from guardian specific stratagems. Especially if you're running an Uthway craft roll, this is really important. I actually think these guys are probably the best in an Uthway list, personally, because they get a lot of perks. Um, but again, there are a few craft roll or guardian specific um, stratagems and so forth that could affect these guys in other lists outside of Uthway as well. So when we look at the Blade Storm stratagem, this is um, a stratagem that um, you use on a unit of Shuriken weapons. Um, and essentially, this is potentially uh one of the best stratagems to use on guardians because guardians as a unit of 20 are actually considered the most potent unit with shuriken catapults um to use with this stratagem and the reason why is because a unit of 20 guardians will have 40 shuriken shots and that is more than any other shuriken unit combined um, that has shuriken catapults. So, um, wind riders, nine wind riders. This has more shots. 10 dire vendors. This has more shots. Um, you know, basically just out competes, um, other units for, um, you know, having the most amount of shots that you can possibly have with this stratagem. And I actually think this is a really good unit to put this stratagem on. Now, a lot of people might say, well, you know, um, Dire Avengers are must be much better target with Hail of Doom or something like that. And yes, um, Hail of Doom is very good with Dire Avengers. We all know this. Um, but Blade Storm is also effective on Guardians as well, just like Dire Avengers. Um, and honestly, even though Dire Avengers are honestly a better unit in general, using Blade Storm on a unit of Guardians, a unit of 20 Guardians, um, is not a bad idea. In fact, in a lot of cases, I actually think that a unit of 20 guardians um, with blade storm and the right buffs, even in a hail of doom list, can get very close, if not outcompete, dire vendors um, for damage. Now, of course, dire vendors have a lot of other bonuses that guardians don't have, but point for point, they're very comparable um, under the umbrella of firepower when we're talking about just raw damage, um, point for point, with this stratagem. Because again, um, 20 Guardians for 180 points is going to be putting out 10 more shots than Dire Avengers will be, with even with Hail of Doom. So, um, you know, again, I haven't done the exact math crunching. Dire Avengers may be a little bit better because they have an extra AP value, um, but... 
Guardians do have 10 more shots, which means they'll also proc Bladestorm uh, more as well. At least 1.5 more procs, and that's not even counting with Guide. Now, as far as Martial Citizenry goes, I think it's kind of a redundant ability on Guardians, to be honest. I, I'm not sure why they had this. Uh, it seems kind of... It seems kind of like a lame ability, to be honest, because most Guardian units already get rerolls of one to hit when they're near objectives. So I think unless the unit is not near an objective um, or and Bladestorm, you know, maybe use Bladestorm on another unit that turn. Um, I think Bladestorm's pretty much always going to be the preferred pick with these guys. Pretty much every single turn you can use it um, just because it's just that effective, especially with a large unit of Guardians. Now, I know I've said that a couple times, a large unit of Guardians, and yes, large units of Guardians have a lot of different weaknesses, which we'll go into, but overall, I think that um, it might be the best way to run them. So let's go ahead and real quick look at the weaknesses of Guardians. So first of all, Guardian Defenders are extremely fragile. They have a 4 plus armor save, they have no invul save base, and they're really not great at holding objectives, which... If you look at their ability, it kind of seems like they're supposed to be, um, you know, a unit that sits on an objective, right? Uh, their defender ability. But I've actually found that this is sort of a trap because they, well, to be honest with you, their weapons have a decent range, but they don't have a great enough range to the point where you want to sit on an objective the entire game in the backfield. Even with heavy weapon platforms, you just don't get the most out of the unit that way. Now, the other weakness is they must be taken in at least units of 10, which makes them more weak to blast weapons and makes them susceptible to a lot of leadership issues if they start to lose models in the unit. Guardians also, um, especially Guardian Defenders, have an extreme lack of options outside of their extremely expensive weapon platforms. And yes, I believe the weapon platforms are indeed overpriced. If you look at the price of them when compared to other factions' heavy weapons, the difference is insane. I know that it's technically not replacing the Shrek and Catapult of a Guardian, but let's be honest, is it really worth almost double the points cost of a Guardian? Um, I don't really think so. And especially when you consider that, you know, a Space Marine taking a last cannon is just 10 points, um, you know, and then you look at a Guardian, it's like, well, taking the heavy wep weapon platform, just a Shrek and Catapult, costs double that. So I think they're a little bit too overpriced personally, and they can't move and shoot um, without penalty. So it's a little bit, in my opinion, too expensive. Also, the shrinking weapons um, that they have do really decent damage, but they get outcompeted by a lot of other options in our codex. So um, a lot of other units in our codex do more damage for, you know, point for point than guardians do in a lot of cases. And lastly, um, again, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but the weapon platforms lose effectiveness on the move. Because they don't have any special abilities that allow them to move and shoot without penalty, they're going to be hitting on fours when they move, while guardian defenders will typically be hitting on threes. So they're definitely the least cost-effective option for taking um, Eldar heavy weapons. Now, the strengths of guardian defenders, though, are actually nothing to um, kind of discount. And after several, several painful attempts at trying to run units of Guardians, I've actually found that they have quite a few strengths that other units just don't have in our Codex. And one is that, actually, ironically, they can be taken as a unit of 20. And this makes them a very efficient target for powers like Guide and Fortune. And at first, it might seem like kind of a joke. It's like, well, Fortune on, on Guardians? Why would you waste Fortune on a unit of Guardians? But actually, believe it or not... um. To be fair, when you're taking a unit of 20 Guardians, Fortune can be very effective um, and force the enemy to waste a lot more firepower on the Guardians than he was actually expecting to do, which can throw off your opponent and make it a lot harder for him to make decisions in the game and um, kind of lead to a situation where, you know, your opponent might not know what to do um, and his plans might be foiled because he was thinking they were an easy target. Now, they do have slightly more cost-effective firepower than Wind Riders with Twin Shrick and Catapults when under the effects of Blade Storm and Guide. And the reason being, mostly, is because they are slightly cheaper than Wind Riders. Now, Wind Riders have a lot more... 
versatility, um, both in their speed and their ability to stay safe. So, I mean, to be honest with you, Wind Riders are the better unit. I'm not going to argue the Cardian Defenders are better here, but they do have slightly more cost-effective firepower. Now, as for the Guardians as well, they have objective secured, being troops, and their base cost per model is the second cheapest in the Codex. So they are cheap bodies for our Codex. And lastly, they make a great roadblock. So what I've found um, works most effectively with Guardian Defenders um, is actually a build that I like to call the Webway Aegis. And for those of you who don't know, Aegis is another word for shield. And basically what this means is that um, this build is designed to come out of Webway Strike um, and act as a shield for other units in your army, but also to um, kind of block enemy units um, from achieving their goals that turn. So essentially, this is what it is. It's a unit of 20 guardians without heavy weapon platforms. Now, the reason I don't take the heavy weapon platforms is because it makes the unit too expensive. Um, basically, you want to strike a balance between cost effectiveness and damage, and heavy weapon platforms just don't make the cut. Now, this unit is designed as a unit of 20 to respond to enemy pushes, and basically what it does is it body blocks them in in the first couple turns of the game so that they cannot um, push out that turn. And basically, this is great when paired with buffs to deal good damage to the enemy units while they're there, but also um, allow your infantry to survive a little longer so they could possibly mess up the enemy even more if they fail to actually kill them. What this will do is this will make your opponent invest a lot more into killing the unit than he or she originally thought. So essentially, um, I'm going to show you guys in the next couple of slides how to operate this kind of unit because it's not conventional. You're not going to use it in a defensive kind of way, defending an objective. You're going to be using it as an aggressive unit to block an enemy's movement uh, for that turn. Now, there are a couple things that this won't work against, obviously, like things that can fly and so forth. But um, what it does do is it does prevent the enemy from getting to where he wants to go in those early turns of the game, thus giving you a lot more battlefield control. So here we have an example of, um, you know, one of your standard uh, strike force missions um, in the core rulebook in match play. Um, and we have a unit of 20 guardians here as red dots. Now, as you can see, I have spread them out across the battlefield. So basically... There's a rule in the core rulebook which states that um, every model in the unit must be within two inches of at least one other model. And if the unit is six or more models, it need, they all need to be within um, two inches of two, at least two models. So um, two of the models on the flanks are actually uh, positioned as triangles so that they can, you know, they're not an illegal, um, they're not in an illegal formation. And basically we plug them into a space where your opponent is trying to go. So in this case, on the left flank, now, of course, there was other units in this game. I failed to include them in this diagram uh, because I just want to show you what the role of the Guardians was. And essentially, um, this is how it was set up. I got the first turn, I went, and then during his first turn, he swung his rhinos around. He was bringing them around to um, probably capture that objective the next turn. And he had a unit of five tactical Marines in... The ruins who had moved up from behind it um, and just within the ruins just to get a better um, vantage point on the objective. So what I did in return was I dropped my unit of 20 guardians down in front of the objective, but still nine inches away from the enemy using webway strike. Um, I was barely in range of the objective. I know it kind of doesn't look like in the diagram. It's not really that much to scale, but I did have at least one or two guardians within range. So they were getting the benefit of the defender ability, although to be honest with you, I also cast guide on them, so it was kind of irrelevant in this case. Now, um, what I ended up doing was I had a couple of fire prisms behind the rooms as well, um, and my opponent knew that I was probably going to kill the rhinos, but what I did here was I actually blew up one of the rhinos, and I used my guardians uh, with the blade storm stratagem guide, um, and I think I put a jinx on the unit in the ruins uh, to give... 
them a little more trouble. But essentially, um, one rhino died. One of the squads that had to disembark from the dead rhino also was shot by guardians, and the unit inside the ruins was shot by guardians. Both of those units actually died. Now, this may have been just a case of a little bit of good rolling. I did roll a good amount of sixes against the unit in the ruins, um, and he did fail a lot of armor saves on that unit in particular. Uh, but to be honest with you, I had pretty average rolls against the other unit on the left-hand side. And, well, I mean, maybe they're a little above average, but um, they also died as well. I think four of them ended up dying, and then um, I think maybe I killed one with something else. Um, but basically, this Guardian unit is now blocking his advance onto the objective. So he cannot now get on the objective without having to go through the Guardians, or at least waste a turn shooting them with the remainder of his forces. So what he had to do was he had to disembark two other tactical marine squads from his other rhino. He moved his other rhino um, into the ruins because he felt that, um, you know, or behind the ruins, I should say, because he felt that it would just die if it stayed out there. And he had three units shooting at my guardians and... Lo and behold, yes, the Guardians died, but they stopped the Space Marines from getting on that objective, which set me up to then not only kill the remaining Space Marines on that flank, but also take the objective myself. Um, and he really didn't have much else on that flank left. And on the other side of his, you know, kind of board, um, his units were doing a little bit better, I have to say, but you know, they still weren't in a position to support that left flank. I guess it would be his right flank, but my left flank, I should say. So basically what the Guardians achieved, while making up their own points with shooting, um, they achieved holding the entire enemy left flank in place for one turn so that the rest of my army had another turn of shooting at them, forced his units out of the Rhinos, um, because if he didn't, he wouldn't have been able to deal with the guardians, right? So I forced my opponent to make a lot of hard choices. And at the end of the day, um, I only lost a single squad of guardians, whereas he bas <clears throat> uh, basically lost his entire left flank. Um, now again, the guardians did die. Um, he shot them quite to death with three squads of space Marines and it was very brutal. I did cast Fortune on the Guardians. It didn't help them, I have to say. I have to be honest with everybody here. It did not save them against just even just three squads of Space Marines. Um, but it did stop him from getting in the objective. And it baited his units out of the transports uh, so that they could then be shot at um, you know, by the rest of my army on the left flank. So all in all... What the Guardians actually achieved was not just killing a couple of squads of, you know, Space Marines and then dying. They actually achieved a change in the pace of the game itself on the left flank and were crucial to uh, my army's ability to actually sweep his left flank. Because if I didn't have those Guardians there, if they were set up in the traditional way in the ruins or whatever like that, um, I would have lost an attrition battle on the left flank big time. And it would have, um, he would have had time to bring his other units that were, um, honestly doing a lot better on the right hand side of the board over to the left, uh, to be able to support them as well. They would have collapsed in and I would have been in a lot of trouble, but because I was able to do this, he wasn't able to respond fast enough on his right, on the right side of the board and my fire prisms and other units were able to then turn around and shoot those units before they could respond as well. Um, so it just goes to show you, even a unit of guardians like this can be very effective, even if they don't quite make up their points. Um, I think they were like off by about 30 points of making up their points worth. They were able to do a lot more than that in the way they controlled the battle. So just next time you think about taking unit of guardians, maybe start to think about it a little bit differently. Instead of thinking about them as a unit that can do damage or hold an objective, think about how they can dictate your opponent's movement and force your opponent to make decisions that he doesn't want to make yet. You know, he didn't, by the way, my opponent did not want to have to disembark his units in his rhino yet. 
he did want to protect them for a little bit longer, um, but he was forced to do it because the Guardians were essentially right there, and he knew he had to deal with those Guardians or else they would have just held that objective um, very secure because, you know, there's 20 models in that unit, right? So um, in that way, the Guardians actually did much more than just their um, damage. They dictated the pace of the battle, and um, I believe that this might be an effective way to run Guardians if... You find yourself needing uh, to buy a turn or two um, for your other units. So in conclusion, I think Guardian Defenders obviously have a lot of weaknesses as a unit in general, but they can function very well when used as a mobile reactionary force coming from reserve via webway strike. This covers their major deficiencies as a unit and allows them to create distance between you and your more important units and buy time for yourself while doing significant damage with a good combination of buffs and special abilities, which, to be honest with you, Guardians don't do bad damage. They do pretty decent damage overall. The main problem with them just lies in their general susceptibility to damage, which, unlike other Eldar units, um, Guardians have a really hard time mitigating. And honestly, I would have liked to see them get some sort of invul save of some kind. Um, but again... Um, I think that at the end of the day, they have a very specific role to play in an Eldar army, which might not always um, suit your particular playstyle. And certainly they're not a unit that's ever used at the top levels of competition. But again, I think they can be used um, if used in certain ways. And personally, I've stopped using them with heavy weapons just because it adds so many points to the unit that they stop becoming cost effective. And I've honestly counted the, no <clears throat> the number of times um, that the heavy weapons actually were, you know, made up their points. And to be honest with you, the Shuriken Cannons and Scatter Lasers rarely made up their points um, in any of the games I've played. So, you know, to make up 40 points, they need, to, in my mind, at least need to kill three Space mar Marines um, or, you know, something equivalent. And typically, they've been unable to do that uh, because of the debuff to their hit uh, when they move and shoot. So, unfortunately, they haven't really been able to do that. Um, and the best way that I have found to use them is actually as a mobile defense force that uh, forces your opponent into certain quadrants to the board and delays them from reaching you um, for that one vital turn. All right, everybody, um, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys um, took something away from this. Um, I'm still experimenting with Guardians. I still want them to work, but I haven't found a lot of, honestly, a lot of ways that they can work effectively. Um, this is the first way that I've really found them to work very well. Um, it takes a little bit of, um, you know, kind of planning, pre-planning with Webway Strike and a couple of psychic powers in your back pocket, uh, but they can be very effective at dictating your opponent's movement um, in the battle. Now, just a disclaimer, though, if your opponent has the fly special rule on a lot of his transports and stuff, like if it's another Eldar player or if it's a Dark Eldar player, you're going to have a lot more trouble doing this. And I think that against those opponents, um, this strategy is not going to work as well. I think this is mainly a strategy that's good against um, units that move a lot on foot, Space Marines, um, you know, sometimes Orcs or... Honestly, Tyranids, um, to stop them from getting close to you for that crucial turn. So I don't think it's really a um, unit that's, you know, good in certain circumstances against armies that have a lot of flying units. All right, everybody, uh, that's it for today. Um, I will see you guys next time. Have a great one. Peace out. See you guys later. Oh, yeah. And leave a comment in the comment section if you have found effective ways to run... Guardian Defenders, uh, I'd love to hear your comments on this one. All right, everybody. Peace out. Have a good one.